Hello and welcome to our session on Google's top HPC best practices for deploying and managing the most demanding workloads. My name is Wyatt Gorman, and I'm the High Performance Computing Solutions Manager at Google Cloud. During this talk, we will share uh, HPC best practices by describing our scalable HPC platform and infrastructure available within Google Cloud, as well as the solutions available from Google and our partners to simplify running your preferred HPC applications, job schedulers, and storage systems, and more. Throughout the talk, you'll also hear about how some of our HPC customers are benefiting from expanding their environments to include Google Cloud. Let me start by introducing Google Cloud's platform and our vision and strategy for high performance computing. When we think about how we're making Google Cloud a great place for people to run their HPC workloads, we think about things in terms of four key pillars. First, we've prioritized making Google Cloud fast and affordable, bringing to the platform the latest and greatest HPC technology in areas like CPUs and GPUs, and building technology that will work well for HPC-specific things like MPI scalability. Easy and Compatible focuses on making our Cloud HPC platform as HPC capable and as easy to use for newcomers to HPC as it is for HPC gurus with cloud certifications. And furthermore, we wanna uh, make our platform compatible with and well supported by the HPC partners that we all work with. That leads to Partner Preferred, where we work to ensure a broad network of supported software partners and system integrators to ensure our customers can easily implement their HPC workloads on Google Cloud. And we make sure that we bring our HPC users the best of Google by engaging industry experts to help customers modernize into the cloud and by making use of things like Google's global network to support HPC users who are collaborating around the world. Let's take a look at our HPC platform and dive into the infrastructure, solutions, and best practices behind it. Our HPC platform consists of three layers in yellow uh, with our cloud infrastructure at the base, including compute network and storage. We'll dive into those different areas and options and best practices for those core building blocks in a bit. I won't talk about GKE in this talk due to time, but I'd encourage you to go watch the GKE talk on batch workloads where one of our major HPC customers in the energy industry will share how they're running their seismic exploration workloads on Google Cloud. Above infrastructure, we have the development and deployment layers, which include our partner integrations for essential components like job scheduler, storage, or a complete HPC platform. And you'll also find some of our core solution components like our HPC toolkit, our HPC VM images, and batch that allow users to deploy and manage HPC environments and workloads easily. Let's look at the infrastructure building blocks before we continue to build on that with our partners and solutions. Looking at our HPC infrastructure, most people think of three key components when they think of infrastructure in high performance computing. That's compute, storage, and network. Let's dive into each of these areas to see what's available for HPC users, what best practices we recommend, and how our customers have benefited from running their HPC workloads on Google Cloud. Looking first at compute, Google offers a wide variety of VM families to support all workloads, and choosing the right VM type for your workload is an important best practice. On the left, we have our general purpose VMs, uh, where those include some of our lower performing cost efficient VM types like the E2, which works well for scale out workloads like web hosting, and our workload optimized VM families on the right complement those. Those include some of our VM families like HPC, uh, like uh, the C series with our HPC specific capabilities, as well as the A series. You might be wondering what makes HPC VMs different than general purpose VMs and what improvements those differences make for HPC workloads. Well, HPC VMs have several key differences that make them perform well for HPC workloads today. First is the choice of hardware and features that goes into the VM. We choose high clock speed and well-balanced CPU types, high bandwidth memory, high performance GPUs, and we focus on uh, how we design the system very carefully to support compute intensive and IO intensive workloads. That means these VMs also support features like disabling SMT, also known as Intel hyperthreading, for optimal performance where SMT is not preferred. Next is virtual NUMA, which provides a direct mapping of host CPU to the guest CPU, giving your guest operating system a view of the way it's truly laid out on the physical host machine, allowing for improved memory management and CPU pinning. This also ensures socket isolation and other optimized CPU scheduling. Third is our support for placement policies, which include, improves network latency, and I'll share more about in, in a later slide. Finally, there are a number of network optimizations, which include 100 gigabit per second VM throughput, 9K MTUs, an improved virtual NIC driver, and tunings which optimize HPC performance. So what do these differences make in terms of HPC performance in the real world? Well, if you take our latest C2D VM family as an example, we've seen a 66% performance improvement when comparing it against the N2D VM, which is our general purpose VM type with the previous generation of AMD Epic CPU. 
and without the same kind of HPC optimizations. Those material differences translate to a real world improvement in cost and time to result for our customers. Airshaper is one example of a customer that's uh, seen those improvements as well, and they've seen a 50% improvement in cost and a 30% reduction in simulation times when compared to the previous generation of VMs, which is three times faster than their on-premises environment. In addition to CPU VM types like the C2D VM family, we also have G multiple GPU VM families um, and GPU types supported through VM families like our A2 VM family. HVMs support up to 16 NVIDIA A100 GPUs per VM. And they're backed by Intel Cascade Lake CPUs, similar to the high-performance C2 VM family. This configuration provides customers like the Allen Institute for AI a 4x performance improvement over their existing systems without any major code changes. Bulk API is an important best practice for everyone running HPC at large scales as well. The Bulk API combines two key capabilities to improve the time to deploy large scale HPC clusters. First is the ability to deploy up to 1,000 identical instances with a single API call. That dramatically reduces the time spent sending individual API calls for each VM creation. And second is regional deployment rather than zonal deployment, which searches for capacity for you and adds flexibility to your HPC deployments to avoid stockouts and get your HPC VMs deployed faster. With these features, Bulk API can speed up large scale instance deployment by up to 500% in our testing. Choosing the right storage for your workload is an important best practice as well, and Google has a variety of HPC storage options to fit your needs. Google offers managed services for object, block, and file storage, and has partnered with leading storage providers to support their file storage solutions, including a number of parallel file system offerings, including Lustre, Spectrum Scale GPFS, and most recently Intel Deos, to support your most demanding scratch storage requirements. And we know that storage is not one size fits all and that HPC clusters achieve the best performance, reliability, and cost effectiveness by combining storage systems in a hierarchy of storage. And that's why we built the storage transfer service to support customers who need to move data from on-premises into the cloud and between their multiple distributed storage systems. With the storage transfer service, you can use a Google service to manage high performance data movement for you. And when combined with the burst buffer capabilities in our partner scheduler offerings, it becomes a powerful tool to easily and uh, pre and post stage data as part of your overall HPC workflow. Google's networking is the third key infrastructure component that makes up the Google HPC infrastructure. And there are a large number of best practices that should be used to achieve the best possible HPC application performance in terms of networking. Google's HPC VMs can be configured with tier one bandwidth, which enables up to 100 gigabit per second and two in between VMs. Combine that with our predictable low latency and you already have a very capable HPC system for many workloads. But when you add on the types of tunings and optimizations that are available on Google Cloud through our HPC VM image and things like our new Google Virtual NIC, our 9K MTUs and placement policies, you can achieve an extraordinary type of performance. Placement policies are a new feature for Google customers and using placement policies is an important HPC best practice. Placement policies allow users to manage their HPC VMs according to network topology. And there are two types, compact and spread. Spread is used for HA purposes, and it isn't really interesting for most HPC use cases, but compact is uh, specifically built for and supported on HPC VM families. It's designed to minimize network hops and therefore minimize latency between VMs, which can dramatically improve performance for tightly coupled workloads. Cost can be an important consideration when moving to and, and running workloads in the cloud and placement policies can help reduce the total runtime of a workload, which is a great way of reducing the total cost of a workload. But there are also a few key best practices you should also follow uh, when minimizing the cost of your HPC workloads. One is to consider using custom machine types when possible. Um, that allows users to define their HPC, uh, their, their own instance profile outside the bounds of the standard instance profiles like a four, eight or 16 core VM and to set something like a 10 core VM with 10 gigabytes of RAM, or that includes a GPU and so on. And custom machine types can reduce the cost of running a workload by up to 19%. So take advantage of them when you can. Committed use discounts and other discounting programs are also available, and you should talk to your Google rep about what kind of discount and credit programs are available for you. Finally, spot VMs are, your own, are, are our replacement for uh, preemptible VMs, they could be up to 91% cheaper than a standard instance, and there's no set time limit like with preemptible VMs, which makes them even better for HPC workloads. When you're using spot VMs, we recommend focusing on loosely coupled workloads, checkpointed jobs, and MPI jobs with uh, around eight nodes in a job or less to minimize the potential for impact from node preemption. So what kind of real-world results are our customers seeing from our HPC infrastructure? 
Well, EPFL, Swiss Plasma Center is one of our HPC users, and they're simulating tokamak fusion reactors on Google Cloud. They've not only seen that it's easy to spin up HPC clusters in Google Cloud, but that those clusters are extremely performant and are delivering to them a 33x speed up for their tokamak simulation with a nearly perfect scaling efficiency of their workload up to 32 nodes in a Google Cloud HPC platform. So the infrastructure components are the essential building blocks, but what methods are available for you to put together an HPC environment in the cloud? There are a few key ways. Take the analogy of a cake for a moment. There are essentially three ways to get a cake. One is to bake a cake from scratch. You go out and you get the individual ingredients and assemble the ingredients into a cake yourself. And that's our first option. You go out, you get the individual pieces and partner solutions to bake your own cake, create your own HPC cluster from scratch. And that's how we historically recommended people build their HPC environments on Google Cloud as well, with the support of our partner organizations and partner professional services. However, today there are two new options. The second option is to go out and buy a boxed cake mix from the store. This is a much easier option because most of the ingredients are already included for you and you just need to follow the instructions, do some assembly and maybe uh, a little bit of customization with a dash of vanilla or something. And in a very short time, you can have a cake. That's the Cloud HPC Toolkit. It's a flexible toolkit designed to take all the individual ingredients, the individual solutions from Google and its partners and assemble them together for you in a way that's easy for you to configure and assemble without needing to buy each ingredient separately and learn how to assemble them. And it has HPC, uh, Google's HPC best practices built in for you and all of our ex, uh, HPC experience. So you don't have to work hard to ensure good performance. The last option in how to get your cake is to go to a bakery and buy a cake that's already made. That's the batch path where you can use our cloud native managed batch service to deploy your workloads directly to Google Cloud. It's supported by the Cloud HPC toolkit and despite not necessarily having as many features as some of our partner scheduler solutions, it's a quick and easy way to get started running HPC on Google Cloud for users who are just starting and for power users alike. Let's take a better look at the solutions available for each method of implementation. Regardless of how you're building your HPC environment, you'll want to ensure you're building on the HPC VM image. This is a turnkey CentOS 7 based image that launches with all the HPC best practices for MPI performance, including OS tunings, optimizations, and recommendations. It's easy to deploy, and it already is built into our partner offerings and the Cloud HPC Toolkit, so it's ready out of the box. The benefits of using the HPC VM image are significant as well, where we've seen an almost a 25% reduction in runtime of the LS Dyna 3 car crash model across eight VMs compared to a vanilla CentOS image. Deploying your HPC environment with the HPC VM image is a, a simple best practice that everyone should take advantage of. And when baking your cake from scratch, along with the HPC VM image, you would choose your preferred scheduler and storage platforms from our supported partners, combine their code with your application, and, and possibly bring in a systems integrator to help deploy and manage the HPC environment. This process requires pretty significant ex HPC expertise, as well as time spent learning how each piece's uh, cloud integration operates, how the components work together, and how to manage them long term. Luckily, though, the HPC, the Cloud HPC Toolkit is uh, ready and, and there to simplify this process for you. The Cloud HPC Toolkit is a modular toolkit written in Terraform, and it's designed to make it easy to deploy repeatable turnkey HPC environments with Google Cloud's HPC best practices all built in. The toolkit consists of three key components. First, a blueprint, which is a YAML-based architecture of what your specifications for your HPC environment should be built to. And these blueprints can be specific to a workload, they can be general purpose, or they can be focused on a partner solution, for example. The toolkit comes with several example and community-provided blueprints, and users can customize these blueprints to meet their needs. Blueprints reference modules then that the toolkit supports, and these modules break down into several types like scheduler and storage. The modules are then deployed onto our HPC infrastructure. Let's take a look at how these pieces come together and how the toolkit works to deploy your environment. When a user builds a blueprint, they reference HPC modules. The modules are scripts that can be imported from public sources like GitHub or can be built by a user for public and private use. These modules are configured in the blueprint through a set of variables in each module and the modules come together to define all the components of an HPC environment, including the network storage, scheduler, compute resources, and so on. The blueprint is then fed into the GHPC engine, which will import the HPC module code as needed and build an, a deployment folder with the scripts needed to deploy the complete HPC environment as defined in the blueprint. The deployment folder can then be used to directly deploy the HPC environment into the cloud or it can be modified, packaged, or distributed as needed. That gives admins a flexibility and, and repeatability by allowing them to zip up and archive the deployment 
that's used for an experiment to be used to repeat the experiments in the future, or it can be sent to an individual user to allow them to deploy and manage their own HPC environment in their own project and so on. The HPC environment it deploys is created with all the HPC best practices and has security built in and integrates with the best of Google, like cloud monitoring, logging, and budgeting to allow users to monitor and manage their HPC environments really easily. And the impact of using the toolkit versus do it yourself is pretty clear. The toolkit, uh, you can, a user can write 59 lines of blueprint uh, code that would translate to 13,500 lines of total deployed code. And that dramatically reduces the time that someone needs to configure and deploy a complete HPC environment and make the job, uh, it makes the job of managing the HPC environment that much easier. Our partners are already seeing a tremendous benefit by using and supporting the HPC toolkit. And NAG says they can now stand up a complete HPC cluster in Google Cloud in minutes. And AMD has seen a significant reduction in the complexity of deploying HPC workloads in the cloud and improvements in automation and error mitigation. Simplifying our users' experiences of moving their HPC into the cloud will improve everybody's ability to do more science, which is really the collective goal of the HPC community. Finally, the batch service is an awesome new managed service for natively scheduling and executing batch jobs at scale on Google Cloud resources. And it's a cloud native job scheduler built from the ground up for Google Cloud. And it's a powerful tool for anyone from people looking to just get started running their workloads on Google Cloud to large customers building their own custom HPC platforms and are moving away from traditional job schedulers maybe. While it doesn't support all of the features you might find in our established HPC job scheduler partners, it does support key scheduling features like job priorities, task retries, task timeouts, and supports both loosely and tightly coupled workloads, including MPI workloads. Batch runs on Google Cloud uh, Compute Engine today and supports things like spot VMs and custom machine types like we talked about to help optimize your costs. And we've partnered with several key HPC partners, especially Life Sciences partners, to bring batch support directly to the applications that users are familiar with, with partners like NextFlow. And customers are already starting to see the benefits Locomation is an autonomous trucking company who runs several of their most challenging workloads on Google Cloud and adopted Batch as a new tool to improve their productivity. And they found that they were able to reduce the time it took for them to get insights out of their large data sets by 80%, which is a massive improvement that allows them to move faster towards their goal of making freight trucking safer and more efficient. So throughout our session, I've highlighted several HPC best practices for you to keep in mind as you start out or continue on your journey into the clouds. Uh, first is choosing the right VM type uh, make sure you choose an HPC VM type that matches your HPC workloads and take advantage of the specific HPC VM features. Be sure to use the bulk API when deploying your HPC VMs to speed up your VM deployment. Choose the right storage and don't be afraid to mix storage types. Data movement is simple with the storage transfer service. Use the HPC VM networks features like the 9K MTU, 100 gigabit per second networking and best practices to optimize your network performance, especially for MPI workloads. Compact placement policies are a key networking feature that can mean a big difference in VM to VM performance. And you should reduce your costs using custom machine types and spot VMs as well. Always deploy these VMs using the HPC VM image, which comes with our HPC best practices for MPI built in. And use the Cloud HPC toolkit to build bespoke HPC environments that implement all our HPC best practices out of the box. Or if you're looking for a simpler way to deploy your HPC workloads, try the batch service for a simple, fully managed HPC scheduler. Thank you all so much for your time. Please just let us know if we can help you expand your HPC environment to include Google Cloud. And I hope you enjoy the rest of Next22.